G'day guys and gal. There's a lot of silly things in Warhammer 40k, melee being the primary form of combat despite everyone having access to long range weaponry, space bugs of death who will likely be the overall winners of the setting, and cheery space fungi being a massive threat to everyone are just some of the things that make me smile when I think about Warhammer 40k. That came about sounding more sadistic than I intended, but you know what I mean. Even with these wild forces of destruction flinging their schlongs around in a galactic dick measuring contest, there is one thing that still makes everyone stop in awe. Titans. Fortunately, Warhammer has decided that the best way to deal with titans is by throwing other titans at them, not by concentrated fire or infiltration or anything sensible like that. Hence, everyone has titans and now we get to have some hectic titan vs kaiju type battles. Before we get started, I want to say a massive cheers to you guys and gal who ordered the Magikill 100,000 subscriber hoodie and singlets. We have already completely sold out of the hoodies, which is absolutely demonic. I thought it would take us weeks if, you know, if we even got there in the end. If you missed out on the hoodie, then eat shit, Lamau- <clears throat> sorry. I mean, bad luck, but if you subscribe now, not only will we overtake Chapter Master Valrak, but we will get to the 200k merch faster. Singlets are still available and look absolutely sick, so get them now before they too go. Today we'll discuss the different titans each of the factions have, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. If gigantic god machines have weaknesses, that is. We'll also talk about if the titans in 40k make any practical sense. Not that they need to, but it's fun to talk about nonetheless. Let's get into it. Of all the weapons of war made in 40k, Pretty much all of them, by Primarchs, look up to the Titans in fear and awe. Space Marines are nothing but ants to Gargans, and the Elder Titans make the big boys from Pacific Rim look like quadriplegics. We will start off with the Imperial Titans, arguably the least sensible ones. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, in life, nerds have the coolest toys. I guarantee Elon Musk has way cooler shit in his house than Ronaldo. This logic applies to Warhammer. The Mechanicus of Mars, the biggest nerds in the galaxy, made the coolest toys. The Titans. Now, the Titans were originally made to end the civil war on Mars and United. Must have been one hell of a civil war if it needed the equivalent of LeBron James playing in a disabled junior school basketball match to win it. The point being, it seems like overkill. Either way, expanding the budget for impractical prototype weapons of war paid off, as it turns out that no other Xeno race at the time had the same line of thought. When Mars aligned itself with the Emperor, the Emperor took numerous Titans for his own private use, and integrated the rest into the armies of the Imperium. Fortunately for the Imperium, they still know how to make Titans from scratch, without the assistance of an STC, so we're going to keep seeing these boys for years to come. Every piece of Imperial machinery has a warp-based AI called a machine spirit, like a form of consciousness or soul. Small devices all the way to Titans have these spirits and they vary wildly. A pistol that is neglected on a spiritual level might unexplicitly jam more often. A car who is taken care of more and blessed correctly may run exceptionally well. For Titans, their machine spirits are so powerful that the Titans can act speak and move on their own accord, despite the fact that they need to have a human pilot. Meaning, the meme about the Mechanicus being weird for praying that the machines work and rubbing oil all over them like they're trying to pleasure them is actually a valid thing that they do. All in all, when an Imperial Titan walks the battlefield, you know shit is about to go down. The smallest Imperial Titan is the Warhound Scout Titan, standing at just over 10 meters tall. This fast flanking titan is set up to act as a vanguard unit. Charging in, wrecking tits with its dual turbo lasers, this boy is very powerful, only really preyed upon by greater demons or bigger titans. To make matters better, or worse if you aren't friends with the Warhound Titan, they always travel in packs of two. Originally, they could be seen in entire squads consisting of over 10 Warhounds fighting together. However, due to hectic war crimes committed by Warhound squads from the Traitor Legions during the Horus Heresy, the Imperium has capped the Warhound squad limit to two. Not sure how this would be effective with dealing with war crimes, though like, two Warhounds can definitely ruin civilian populations, and if they choose to go traitor, then they wouldn't really worry about the imposed limit anyway, but I, it's, it's, it's the thought that counts I suppose. 
After the Warhound, we have the Reaver Battle Titans, which are pretty much Warhounds times 2. They are twice as durable as a Warhound and have twice the firepower, and stand at over 15 meters tall. The Reaver Titan is also the first Titan on this list that can engage in effective melee combat, which is as dumb as it sounds. Imagine a Transformers fight from a Michael Bay movie but make all the Transformers super old and demented, as well as heavily overdosed on magic mushrooms, and you would have the kind of melee that the Reaver gets into. Each Forge world has their own variants of Titan, hence you can see Reavers carrying a wide assortment of weaponry depending on who made it. After the Reaver, we have the Warbringer Nemesis Battle Titan, which, while still silly, is a pretty badass name. These Titans are designed to be walking guns, like they literally have a giant gun strapped to them that can one-shot fortresses and other Titans. Their secondary weapons are generally used to take out aircraft or other enemy vehicles. Because of all these guns, and shooting, and bang bang skirt skirt, the machine spirits of the Warbringers are especially angry and love death. After the Warbringer, we have the Warlord Battle Titans, which are just like a big chungus version of the Reaver Titans, standing at about 33 meters tall. It's extremely heavily armed and wildly armored, having void shields surrounding it, meaning it's already a bitch to hurt even without all its metal plating. The Warlords are the most common Titan used in battle as they're the most versatile, able to mount guns, more guns, swords, fists, and even psychic weaponry when they need to blast creatures with one too many horns. And finally, for the final main type of Titan, we have the Emperor Titans, which are really, really silly. Standing up to 150 meters tall, these machines are considered to be the avatar of the Omnisar itself. A single shot of an Emperor Titan can wipe an entire lesser Titan squad. They're basically walking fortresses, and that's what they look like. They come in two forms, Imperial class, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm a dumbass, and the Warmonger class, with the Imperial being an all-rounder, and the Warmonger having extra pew pew. There is one man-made Titan that stands above the rest, however. Only one of these have ever been made, and for good reason. The Titan is so powerful that its machine spirit pilots the Titan itself. The Castigator class Titan was also very slick, looking more as if the Tower Elder had created it instead of humanity, as it was made during the Dark Age of Technology, when mankind was inventing lots of cool shit. Unfortunately, it was also corrupted by Chaos, and one of its cannons started shooting out demons. The corruption was believed to be due to how insanely powerful it was, its ego could only ever result in one thing. This titan was brought down by some Grey Knights, and the secret to its construction was destroyed. Which is a shame, really. If they figured out how to make one of these without it turning on them, then Chaos and the Tyranids would be screwed. There are other Imperial Titans, such as the Rapier class, which were faster than Warhounds but hard to pilot, Carnivore class, Punisher class, and Executor class. How do you pilot a Titan? Well, each Titan has a main pilot called a Princeps, who are very rare and strong-willed individuals as they have to dominate a Titan's machine spirit in order to take control of it. They basically get plugged into the Titan and off they go. Commanding a Titan has a huge mental and physical tax. Many Princeps go insane or wither away after a time. This is further compounded by the fact that it's really addictive being in command of a Titan, as when they're piloting it, they feel a part of the God Machine. Imagine heroin, but instead of being an obnoxious junkie, you get to blow up the enemies of the Imperium. They are aided by Titan crews who help take some of the mental load off the Princeps. Now, what about the Traitor Legions in Chaos? Do they have Titans? Yes. Yes, they do. Like most Chaos things, they're pretty much just spiky retextures of Imperial Titans with more aggressive names. Feral instead of Warhound, Ravager instead of Reaver. Unlike the Imperial Titans, however, there are three different ways a Chaos Titan can be piloted. Some of them have normal Princeps in them that are just, you know, normally corrupted but not horrifically and they just do their thing. Others have the Princep completely melted and horrifically fused to the Titan. Or the Titan, usually the Emperor class ones, are possessed by a graded demon. As Chaos aren't exactly builders, more just corruptors and destroyers, they have less Titans than the Imperium. Mankind aren't the only ones who have Titans. The Eldar do as well, and their Titans are arguably way more practical. These ones move and fight a lot more like Transformers or the Jaeger from Pacific Rim. They are graceful and coordinated, but less armed and armored. Unique to only the Crawford Elder, as the Exodites are too poor, and the Dark Elder can't use psychic abilities, which is pretty important for these boys. Firstly, we have the Revenant Scout Titan, speedy boys that shoot hectic laser beams. Instead of shields, these Titans use hologram distortion fields, which make it really hard to see and pinpoint exactly where the Titan is. Sneak, 
100. They are piloted by a combination of living and dead elder. They fight in packs of two or more, with all the main pilots to each revenant being siblings, as that allows them a greater psychic connection, hence a more coordinated attack. After the Revenant, we have the Phantom Titan, which is just an upgrade in every way. It's bigger, better armed, and has two main pilots instead of one. These pilots are generally twins. What makes these so powerful is not its arms and armor though. The Wraithbone used to build these is full of the spirits of dead Eldar warriors, meaning that the Phantom Titan develops its own consciousness fueled by the knowledge of these warriors. To bring a Phantom Titan down, it's not a matter of how many shots it can take, but more if you can land a single shot. Finally, the Eldar have the Warlock Titan, which is literally a Titan with psycho powers. Good luck, mate. For context, even being near one of these invites death or instant banishment, even for greater demons. This list wouldn't be remotely near completion if we didn't mention the Orc Titans, called the Gargants, who, despite being made by Orcs, probably have the most realistic design. Literal balls of firepower and death that stomp around with its stumpy legs. They are crude and simple compared to the other racist Titans, relying on a ton of random firepower and massive crews. There is nothing fancy going on here. No psychic powers, no machine spirit, no plasma reactor, just good old fashioned orc engineering. They aren't as powerful as Imperial or Elder Titans, but they make up for it by being more numerous and way easier and cheaper to build. Occasionally, when enough mech boys circle jerk hard enough, they can create a Mega Gargant, which is the size of an Emperor Titan and fulfills the same purpose of being literally moving fortress. For this to work, they swap out its stumpy legs with massive tank tracks and add enough dacca to blow the crusty jizz-infused pants of your local school priest after teaching the Bible to 5th graders right off him. While the Mega Gargants are not as powerful as Emperor Titans, they have been known to take them down, as noted by Storm Herald falling to the Mega Gargant Godbreaker during the Seas of Hell's Reach. Now, the Tau don't really have Titans. They have their Gundams, which, while they're pretty cute, more match up to the Dreadnoughts than Titans. I will say this, however, the Tau Manta model weighs 13 kilos and has a nearly 1 meter wingspan on the tabletop, which is just demonically fucked. Like mate, I could bicep kill the Manta a couple times and call it a good lift. Most Tau think that the Imperial Titans are just propaganda, and that such machines couldn't possibly exist. Another reason why I actually like the Tau, their naivety is cute. They're probably so proud of their giant Manta ships until the day they see an Emperor class Titan staring at them. That will be the day that the Tau realize victory was never an option. So they really just should start pimping out their women as Imperial sex slaves so G-Man doesn't feel the need to wipe them all out without a second thought. Titans are silly, ridiculous, probably not worth the resources that goes into them and they die a lot, but my god I am glad in 40k. The horizon is more beautiful to watch knowing that giant mechs hundreds of meters of tall are blowing each other apart in the universe out there. And that does us for today guys, the Titans of Warhammer 40k from each faction. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 gives you access to a boatload of Warhammer hentai, including some very gnarly stuff I have on the way, and $10 gives you access to the magical hentai calendar. Hit the subscribe button then hit the real subscribe button for more titanic content. Join the discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.